Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. In this video, we are going to show you how you can use stacks in multiple different ways and for how you can connect it to different type of sources. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so first of all, we are inside AUM. Of course, you can run stacks as well as a standalone application. Now let's create, first of all, an audio channel. And uh, as an audio source, we're going to search for stacks. As you can see, it appears and you can use it as an audio source. Indeed, you can actually uh, use the internal synthesizer and therefore also the internal loopers as well as we have seen in previous tutorials. What we have also seen is that you can create a MIDI channel and you can instantiate as well stack over there. And this is what I showed in, in the very first tutorial by the, where we, use, um, we used stacks to actually drive piano tech and therefore another, another um, synth source um, in another audio channel. However, what you cannot do yet is to load uh, stacks as uh, an insert effect. So if you search for it, you cannot find it. So it's not available yet as uh, a effect processor and therefore you cannot use it here as an insert and effect in a UM. However, if you uh, use it as a standalone, you can actually use it to process audio coming into stacks. Indeed, if you open stacks here, you find the very says oscillator here, wavetable, you click on it, you have an option for audio in, which at the moment is not working because it doesn't allow you as an UV3 to be used as an effect processor. But as I said, if you load it as a standalone, then you can use audio in and for example, you can record your voice on an additional instrument which is connected to it. In the very first tutorial, we have seen how Stacks as a MIDI uh, processor can drive another, uh, another audio source. To recap on that, so if we um, disable this for a moment, this, this instance of Stacks, and we create another audio channel here, and this is what we showed in the previous tutorial, but very quickly to show you to you again, we can connect the two like so, and we take the first, uh, the second instance here as a MIDI processor, right? Now, if we press play, so you have this note here, C, which is played, is sent as a MIDI message directly to Piano Tech. And that is what we showed, as I mentioned one more, um, again earlier in the uh, very first tutorial of Stacks. So you don't need a MIDI processor to actually drive piano tech. You can also drive it directly from the audio um, channel here. So to show you that, let's go to MIDI here and remove the particular channel like so. Now let's reactivate stacks here in, inside this audio channel and let's connect the two. So we click here on the left hand side of uh, piano tech and we connect it to stacks. Now we press play. So what you can see is that in this case, you have again, uh, stack sending out MIDI message in this case for this first step, okay? Which are going, of course, to piano tech. And of course, if you solo stacks, you also hear the internal synth, um, which is using this wavetable, okay? Now to disable that internal sync, you, uh, you have the here what it says in level, which also allows you to send the audio to the looper. So you can turn these right off like so. And then if you press play, you don't hear anything. But of course, if you remove the solo, you start to hear piano tech. Okay, so Effectively, you can use stacks in a audio channel and still as a MIDI processor, right, against uh, um, Pianotech in this case, or it could be anything else, right? 
So let's uh, um, assume for a moment that you want to combine the two. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, I will probably mute Piano Tech, okay? And I will turn on the in level here so that we have the wavetable playing. Then probably I will customize it a little bit, but before we do that, we just create a simple uh, melody. So we in click here to move up and for a number of triggers, so like so. Let's see if the rhythm is okay. Perhaps we turn these down to one eighth. Okay, and then we change a little bit the notes, like so. But it really depends then on what you want to do. I like to quantize as well. So uh, remember here you have a selection of scale. Perhaps we just say go for minor here. Okay. And um, sorry, this is the chord. So let's uh, do this. Um, perhaps that and so on like this. Now let's play with the controls here, we just insert the uh, sub. Now what you could do at this point is click what it says here A, B, so you see the um, a zoomed in view for uh, loopers A and B. Um, I like to enable sync because it will sync automatically the play of what is recorded. Now let's go back to the beginning and let's click here to arm for recording and let's click play and we just get it to play maybe twice and then we stop. Okay, and we stop it there. Now, let's remove the audio here. So we are just going to um, uh, set it down to zero. And now we click play here and press play. Now you can see that the looper here is playing in sync. It stops exactly at the end of the first play and then it restarts because I have sync on, which is great. Now, at this moment, I could actually go back here and what you could do, for example, is f um, let's change the uh, pattern here and let's make it um, something like so. So it is more rhythmic, like so, right? And uh, we bring the level up. We stop that and now we... Um, change the um change a little bit to the uh, table here say what we can uh, create okay insert some chords Okay, now I'm going to record that on uh, Looper B. So, stop there and enable sync. Now, one more time, I'm going to turn this level down and I'll click play and I'll make sure that these two loopers, Looper A and B are enabled. So in this case, I have two loopers, looper, the first one and the second one, which are playing. Now I could have even more fun. I could go to 16 here, right? Now I could actually unmute piano tech. And let's make sure that those are stopped. Okay. And now what we are going to do is create a different melodies here using uh, uh, not chord, but just um, 
perhaps um, here we go, different notes. And we start really simply with just the, these G notes. We click play here, so all three are playing. Practically, I have recorded two lines into looper A and uh, into looper B. And then I'm using still the sequencer here to drive piano tech. In this case, I have piano tech plus these two tracks uh, via the loopers which are playing. So you can see it gives you a lot of uh, possibility to actually create uh, um, your bits. Of course, next I could go to C and D here. I could re enable here, for example, resample and record everything that is being played inside stacks onto that looper and so on. And of course, I can save uh, that loop when I finish and then start again and continue to record. So this is a quick demonstration, as you have seen, on how to use stacks in a different way and um, and combine driving the internal synth with um, in this case, piano tech, but it could be other synth as well. Remember, you cannot use audio in as in a, in a UV3 yet. Hopefully, that is coming uh, very soon as an insert effect. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and as always, see you next time. Bye.